Hi, and welcome to another video. Today I'm going to be doing a colour study using a very limited palette. I've got cadmium red, cadmium orange and burnt sienna. These are analogous colours on the colour chart, which means they are three colours very close to one another. I've also got some mark making tools, including Derwent Inktense pencils, Caran d'Ache Neo Colour 2s and some oil pastels in a similar shade range and then some black and white acrylic paint. So the idea of this study is to not really use any colours that are straight out of the tube. I'll be mixing them together to create a wide variety of shades, but with that very limited palette. And I want to sort of be as free and loose as I can to create interesting marks, which I think will be where the interest lies in this particular study and to capture as much energy as I possibly can. So I'm going to start, as I usually do, by wetting the paper randomly. And scratching into it with a palette knife. So I've mixed up a dark burgundy shade with the black and the cadmium red and a tiny little bit of the cadmium orange. I think I'd like to add a bit more black to that. So starting with the darks and then I'll move on to lighter shades. So I think when we really restrict ourselves down with limitations, it does actually improve our creativity because we don't have as much tools or colours to rely on. We've got to create interest somewhere else. So with this, yes, there will be a lot of different tones, but of a similar shade. So it'll be important to create really interesting marks and that kind of thing using different mediums will add the interest, perhaps different areas of heavy texture against light texture and that kind of thing. I'm also trying to think a lot about my gestures more these days and how I like move my tools around the page. I think it's a lot easier to do that on large pieces of canvas, not necessarily on small pieces of paper, because then you're using your whole body to create the marks. But now I'm really thinking about sort of wrist movements, um, jerky lines, that kind of thing. And a lot of the mark making is down to accident, really. I can't really control what this palette knife is going to do too much to the surface of the paint. So it does add an element of um, what's that word? <laughs> an element of unpredictability. So already I'm getting these really interesting marks. And I like the softer edges against the harsher edges and just building up this contrast of mark making. So now I've established some darks, I think I want to go in with some light shades. So I'm going to get some burnt sienna and some white. And perhaps a tad of the cad red as well. And that makes this really lovely pink shade. Peachy pink.
and this won't necessarily create a really lovely piece of work to start with but it'd be something I can collage with or crop into to create an interesting composition similar to what I was showing in my last video where I collaged a completely new composition from an old painting So it's looking very warm at the moment. So to try and introduce a bit of coolness, I'm going to just mix up a bit of black and cadmium red to make a coolish pink. So yeah, this is a cool shade. I just think it's incredible, like with the small amount of colours that I've got, I've managed to create so many different shades and tones within this piece already. And it's just all about capturing that energy, I think. That's a bit too much. And I always feel like I have to cover every inch of the white paper, but you really don't. Leaving these areas, I kind of wish I hadn't put this paint down here that I just did, leaving areas of white can also be really important. So I think I'm going to leave this one to dry a little bit now as it's very wet and then I'll come in with some dry materials afterwards to make some different marks and different areas of texture. But I want to be very quick with these pieces as they're not really supposed to be resembling a specific place. It's more an energy and an atmosphere of freedom that I want to capture and then afterwards I can crop into specific areas that I like and perhaps an interesting composition will emerge from that. So actually as that piece is drying I figured I might as well do another one at the same time because it's always useful to have different things on the go at the same time that you can work into. I just wet the page again. So colour mixing is always something that you're constantly learning about, like what colours can come from such limited palettes.
should have picked a more springtime colour palette. This one's quite autumnal. But autumn is my favourite month of the year. <laughs> so I quite like it. So again, I think I'll leave that one to dry and come in with some mark making tools after. And I just want to show the difference of these two pieces side by side. And it's all using the same limited palette that I started with, with cad red, cad orange and burnt sienna and black and white. So that was the first one. And they're just such different colour palettes. I think it's really important that we give ourselves these chances to play with our materials because although we might not produce something incredible this anything that can happen during this process can then inspire us and it can inspire bigger paintings so just the fact that I had forgotten <laughs> that cadmium orange mixed with black makes this lovely muted green colour is now something that I'm like oh yeah I remember that now I can incorporate that into a new painting so I think I'm done with this one as well now and I'll add some dry materials in a bit. So this one's about dry. The thicker areas of white paint are still a bit wet but it could be interesting if I scrape my oil pastel through that. It creates quite an interesting texture. So just with oil pastels, um, Derwent Inktense pencils and Caran d'Ache Neocolor 2s, I'm going to go over this. And these are all in a similar palette to what I've been working with, this very limited palette. And you might call this quite intuitive painting. I'm just going with my gut with each mark making implement and not really thinking about it too much. There will be things that I'm responding to. So the shape of that dark, I was following that outline with this neo colour but most of it is just intuitive So I don't want to go too over the top. I think I'll stop there. But I've got some really interesting marks going on in this piece. The colour palette has actually turned out really lovely. I'm enjoying all these warm tones and they're quite autumnal. So I'll see what I can create by cropping into this or perhaps collaging it a bit. So with this one, I'm just really loving the colour palette. It reminds me of dried grasses in a sort of autumnal scene. So I'll just go in again with some mark making tools to add a bit of definition and interest. This white paint's still a little bit wet, so it's been interesting when I've just been going through that with the oil pastel. I'm 
but I don't want to do too much to this one because I do really like it already. So I'll leave that one as it is. So I do really recommend trying a limited palette. Sometimes when we limit ourselves with colours or materials, it can really help to spark our creativity. So I've used the two colour studies to create collages in my sketchbook and you can see the process of me collaging another painting which was this one in my previous video but this is what I've created from the colour studies using that limited palette and I'm really happy with this one I love the warm tones and this earthy green and the pops of pink just add to it I think and then there's this one so you'll notice I kept a lot more of the second piece than the first one as I much preferred the colour palette and I'm finding out that I really prefer warmer colours rather than cool tones. Um, so this is the second piece I've created from those two colour studies. And then I use these colour studies to take it one step further and created this piece in my sketchbook which is using those limited colours, especially the burnt sienna and the cadmium red, to create a really nice warm toned palette. And I've added in a bit of ultramarine blue. So you can see the colour mixes that I've used here. So it was burnt umber, burnt sienna and cadmium red hue, yellow ochre and burnt sienna, ultramarine blue, and then cad red was added into these two mixes. And then I've used burnt sienna and white. So I really hope you've enjoyed this video, watching me play around with a very limited colour palette using just analogous colours from the colour wheel. And I surprised myself really seeing how much is possible with such a limited colour palette. Please let me know in the comments below if you enjoy using a limited colour palette and I'd love to hear what colours you enjoy using. Thanks so much for watching.